Asking who authored the Quran is a very, very sensitive and contentious issue for Muslims. And um, that's what this video is about. Who really authored the Quran? So for people who don't believe in the existence of Allah, God, Yahweh, or any other supernatural deity, it's not hard for us to understand that men wrote the Quran. But for people like Muslims who believe that there's some magical supernatural deity that authored it, they literally believe that this stuff is true. So I guess this video really is for both atheists and Muslims. And this video puts into question who really authored the Quran. Was it Muhammad? Was it this magical supernatural Allah? Was it Muhammad's successors? So in order to really answer this question, you have to think of many different players and many different factors. The first player is this man called Uthman. Now he collected some codex, or namely all the copies of the Quran that were recorded down on pieces of paper. Basically what this Uthman collected represented 23 years of poetry surah's words uh, representing Muhammad's prophethood. So over this 23 year period, Muhammad had his episodes and his delusions and he recited all of this oral poetry, which was very typical at the time. In the Arabian Peninsula, the Arabs really valued oral poetry. And that's what the Quran is. It's a collection of poetry. And being that Muhammad was suffering from something, um, we can never really be positive what mental illness Muhammad suffered from, but all the symptoms really do indicate that he was suffering from temporal lobe epilepsy. So anyway, Uthman, Uthman collected all this stuff, okay? And then um, he put it all together. Now, in Shiite traditions, Muhammad's successor Ali compiled a completely different version of the Quran after Muhammad's death. Um, and Ali's Quran was organized differently than Uthman's was. Ali did not object to Uthman creating a standardized version of the Quran, but he still insisted on keeping his own version of the Quran. So during this time, there were several versions of the Quran floating about through the Arabian Peninsula. Um, after Muhammad's death, there's this uh, caliph named Al Abu Bakr, and he incited a war against another prophet, Musaylima. Musaylima was one of many men claiming to be a prophet at that time. You see, Muhammad was not the only one at that time who claimed to have direct communication with God. Abu Bakr killed um, Muslimiya at the Battle of Yamama, and Bakr decided to collect different chapters and verses of the Quran himself and also put them into a volume. Um, that being said, there is some evidence that some of Musaylima's surahs actually made their way into the Quran, particularly surahs about vegetation, plant life, and farming, because this Musaylima was actually a farmer. Um, then there was another man, um, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, uh, Thabit. I, I'll put it in the video description box in case I, I pronounce it wrong. But he too collected several parchments and codex of the Quran, and he also made handwritten copies of the Quran. So, Uthman ordered that all the copies of the Quran that people had floating around in this area, and there were several different copies sent to Medina where they would be destroyed by boiling or burning. The only reason that Uthman ordered all the copies of the Quran to be destroyed was because he understood that there were several different versions of the Quran, um, different versions of the surahs, different words, different organizations of the text, and he wanted to create something more standardized. Um, so, in fact, one of Muhammad's disciples, um, Masood even refused to hand over his own copy of the Quran for destruction. So the thing that we're going to get to out here is that at this time there were many different versions of the Quran. So it's not just the Quran itself, the words are a reflection of Muhammad's poetry, Muhammad's words, Muhammad's thoughts, and um, kind of like a diary over 23, peri 23 year period. But these were also messed with by his um, caliphs and, and disciples and other people. Muslims um, are indoctrinated by their families and by their communities to believe that the Quran that is the literal word of Allah. They believe that the words themselves are the words of Allah. Now, as atheists, we know that this is ridiculous um, because this Allah creature has never been able to prove it, it, it exists and Muslims have never really been able to give us a really good reason why any person should think that Allah exists. Um, their arguments pretty much are the same kind of arguments that we hear from creationists. Something came out of nothing, and where did the universe come from? If you don't know where it came from, then it must have been Allah. Blah, 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 blah. It's, it's all kind of the same thing, but even when we show them the irrationalities in their argument, they're 
a lot like Christians and Jews. They can't really see it. So anyway, that's not what this video is about. It's about who actually wrote the Quran. Now some Muslims will say that um, Muhammad was illiterate. And because he was illiterate, they will claim that this is proof that he did not write the Quran himself. Uh, what they fail to understand is that a person does not need to be literate in order to recite poetry, which is what Muhammad did. We also have shown that the amount of material Muhammad recited are symptoms uh, called, is a symptom called hypergraphia. And hypergraphia is attributed to a mental disorder called temporal lobe epilepsy. As Muhammad had visions, delusions, moments of lucidity, it appears that he also had this mental disorder, TLE. TLE is the most likely culprit, although we can never be certain. It's probably the most likely thing that he suffered from. So asking who really wrote the Quran is a very contentious issue in Islam because if any person is found to be the true author, then the entire religion itself falls apart. This issue will be met with a tremendous amount of anger, rage, and hostility. Of all the things Muslims will want to censor, it will be this. When we look at the Quran's authorship, we need to look at all the people who contributed to the Quran. The Quran contains plagiarized Bible stories. Therefore, we can say that Jewish and, and Christian traditions contributed to the Quran. Muhammad himself being the, the main contributor who dictated the Quran. He's, a, he's an author of it. Uh, the followers who wrote down the words. Um, because even in translations, things change. The people who literally wrote down Muhammad's words are also contributors to the Quran. Um, and then the people who influenced Muhammad, uh, the people and other poets that kind of influenced Muhammad and how Muhammad was able to create this work of literature, they're all, they all get credit for it as well. Uthman um, is the grand editor. He's the grand organizer, one of many grand organizers and editors. So he gets credit for authoring the Quran. He ordered old copies to be destroyed. He revised it, edited, organized it, shaped into the final, final version we have today. Um, so one cannot say that any one person gets sole credit for authoring the Quran. Many people get credit for authoring the Quran. So from a literary perspective, this makes the Quran a very rich literary work. The words in the Quran are not words of a magical supernatural being. Uh, Muslims have never been able to prove that Allah exists. For the same reason, no one can prove that Poseidon, Zeus, or Thor exist. As far as the Quran's true authorship is concerned, the Quran came into being by many different people. Many Muslims will attempt to debunk this argument, relying on a few fallacious fili arguments. One, they will pose the create a surah like it challenge. This means that they challenge you to write a circle of equal merit to one that we would find in the Quran. This is pretty much like the Kent Ahoven challenge, where he offers to pay $250,000 for scientific evidence of evolution. Um, these challenges are set up in a way where everybody will fail. Assuming that a person does become fluent in archaic Arabic, which is un unlikely that such a person would actually sit down to compose an entire surah, if that person did compose a surah of equal merit, Muslims will find a way to reject it anyway. They will actively look for faults. As they look for faults, they will definitely find them because there's faults in everything. Um, yet they choose not to actively look for faults in the Quran. So, like Kent Hovind's challenge, these challenge, challenges are designed to make sure that everybody who actually attempts will fail. The second challenge Muslims will make trying to convince you that the Quran is, is the word of Allah is they will tell you that the Quran is full of scientific knowledge. This also has been debunked as well. In my, in my upcoming book, I've devoted about 10 pages of instructions showing individuals 12 easy steps how to debunk science in the Quran. Um, I also discuss many of the cognitive biases Muslims experience when they actively look to confirm their beliefs. So there are many arguments people try to make to prove that the Quran was not authored by men. As you debate this issue, remember to keep a rational mind, rely on evidence, rational thinking, and try to identify any logical fallacies that people rely on. Do they get angry? Do they insult you? Um, do they? And this is one thing that Muslims do. They like to change the subject when they have been proven wrong. All in all, um, remember that lots of people get credit for authoring the Quran. No one person gets credit for it. Um, so that's it. Um, bye, everyone.